So Nova, it looks like Scab's Cutter Butter isn't gonna be nerfed after all, but it's time to move on. Yes, yes, I know. I know you're upset, but it's time to move on. You need to go outside. You need to just get out there. Move on with your life. See Nova, isn't it beautiful outside? Isn't it just time to move on? That's right, Nova. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, and we're going to get there together. Let's get salty! Hey, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Hearthstone, the 38th edition of our weekly news recap series. We take a look at all the news and events in the Hearthstone world the past weekend. Well, we've got a doozy of an episode today, a little bit late, but we pushed it late so we could get all the nerf and buffs announcements that have just been announced by Blizzard live in this video. So let's get into it. Our top stories this week. Yes, the nerfs and buffs have all been announced. We'll go over it. Are they good enough? Are they not good enough? We'll talk about it as well as the Grand Master results and my wild tournament results. Well, we'll recap that briefly briefly, as well as the mailbag segment where I answer your questions. So right away, let's get right into it. The buffs and nerfs. What has been buffed? What's been nerfed? Let's, let's start off with the nerfs and the juicy stuff. What's been nerfed? What can you get dust back for? And first we have Crab Rider as expected. Crab Rider has been nerfed. Um, originally two mana, one four. It will now, basically they're changing the, they're giving it a battle cry. This is really kind of different. We haven't seen this kind of change that I can recall where it will gain Wind Fury only on this turn the turn it's played but and it will still have rush so it's still a two mana one four it still is win fury the turn you play it but it it loses that and that that really will hurt the card's snowball effect right like you buff this up it's not hitting twice every turn after its initial play so i think that helps a lot in terms of like scaling back that smork ability of it and uh will definitely dial its power level down significantly also i kind of welcome a more creative change to a card like this rather than just hitting a stat point or mana cost they're actually changing the battle cry to an extent and i think i'm down for it i think it'll definitely make the card more healthy and a little bit more reasonable next we have first day of school which goes from zero mana to one mana and gain three one drops instead so you gain three one drops but it costs a mana so you don't have that guaranteed zero mana play where you play it get a one drop into hand of it all that's a huge deal you get a bit more value but the curve disruption of this will hurt the card a lot you can play this in odd paladin and wild now that could be deemed as a little bit of a buff but that extra value i don't think outweighs the extra like you know the flexibility of getting that one drop into the hand of it all but Paladin's still gonna be really, really, really good. I know they're getting Crab Rider hit, but they still have all the good early game with like Knight of Anointment, all the Librem cards, all that stuff. Paladin's still gonna be really solid and maybe it goes more back to that Librem route, I don't know, but um, it definitely hurts the effectiveness, effectiveness of their curve, which slows Paladin down a bit, which is what they need to do. And uh, I think that accomplishes the goal pretty well. Uh, next, we have Mancrick, finally one I predicted accurately. Um, Mancrick's wife will no longer be a 310, the enraged Mancrick. It will be a 3-7, so it's a little bit easier to kill. Still really powerful. I don't think this affects what decks this card goes into as much. You're still getting a 3-7. It still pushes phase. It's still good on the board, but it's, you know, a little bit more killable. But it's still a lot of stats and still really good at Hunter. We can actually tutor it out, and I think we'll see, still see a ton of play. You can't even disenchant it so you get to hold on it regardless since it's free legendary and well i could disenchant my golden one but i won't do that i think mancrick's still pretty solid but the high roll of getting the uh, enraged copy or the mancrick's wife is not quite as high as before next we have one that kind of pisses me off it's spring water refreshing spring water yes this card is absurd it times game mana but they're not not nerfing encanter's flow encanter stays at two that's the high win rate card of this deck and spring water goes to five it goes to five mana so it's one mana draw two or or with encanters, you still can gain mana depending on the situation. Um, in wild, this does it, it slows down, I guess, APM mage a little bit, but I feel like they're missing the point. Yes, spring water is ridiculous, but encanters is that high win rate card. I don't know. I'm skeptical on this one. It will definitely hurt spell mage and it needs to be dialed down, but I, I feel like encanters was the card to hit. This was a card I thought would be nerfed right out the gate. I predicted that a while ago, but I felt like encanters was the card to hit to start off, but we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Like I said, um, I'm just not the biggest fan of hitting this and not encanters flow, especially when we have cards like uh, cutting class, which are zero mana draw to you almost all the time. And apparently they're never going to get nerfed. So 
I don't know, whatever. Anyways, the last nerf is Hysteria going from three to four mana. This was like an honorable mentions list. And yeah, they see Price, I think they see Priest rising up and they want to dial it back. Hysteria is pretty ridiculous at, at three. And now at four, it's a little bit more reasonable. It's almost mass Hysteria mana cost. We're getting pretty close to that. But yeah, it just dials it back for both Warlock and Priest. And this is actually the second time this card has got nerfed already. So that one uh, didn't do the greatest round and balance testing. But yeah, they'll, it'll scale Warlock and Priest down a bit warlock isn't really doing well but priest has been on the rise and i think i'm okay with this nerf but that's it for the nerfs there's the thing to conviction secret passage ticketus alusia still a lot of problematic and unfun cards out there and in terms of the nerf list i don't think the game's gonna feel a hell of a lot better after this i feel like it's gonna be a lot of the same and uh, we'll take a look at the buffs and hopefully they change things up spoiler alert i don't think they will so let's get into that as well first we have dark inquisitor this is the i think the dark moon races uh priest legendary it's like with all the corrupt stuff it will now also corrupt corrupted cards like it, it'll hit both right now it only hits one and that doesn't feel great is this much better it's a little bit better it's still a one of in a deck with almost no card draw and then you have to run all this garbage corrupted stuff can't see it putting the corrupt stuff over the top but at least it gets buffed this is basically the way it should have been out the gate but i still don't think this really makes that corrupt priest thing work at all we have title surge going from four mana to three mana it's more in line with like how penance is and drain soul is with uh, priest and warlock um good change uh solid I think that helps Shaman a little bit. Definitely a fan of it. Uh, we have Unbound Elemental is now a 3-4. Overload Shaman coming back. Aggro Overload Shaman. Probably not one attack on this guy. I don't think is doing a heck of a lot. Um, can't see it doing too much. I mean, there's still no card draw for Shaman. None of that's getting addressed here. And the, and the last Shaman uh, buff is Lily Pad Lurker going from a 4-5 to 5-6. This is that one elemental that went from a 4-5 like to a 5-6 or a 5-5 to a 5-6 that has like an AoE effect. The card still sees zero play. I don't think Lily Pad Lurker is like inefficient and bad because it's a 4-5 and not a 5-6. It's the whole lack of elemental synergies and lack of card draw. So that's it for the Shaman buffs. And I just, I think Shaman just, really gonna suck still i don't really know what these really do besides move a couple of points of stuff it we'll have to wait and see but yikes um uh, we have fiendish circle going from four mana to three mana so you get three uh four imps for three mana still pretty bad be a buff to like darkest hour warlock if that was a thing in wild but i i don't think you're going for the imp zoo strategy with this card but it's a little bit better we have deck of chaos going from six to five mana so you might get luna's pocket galaxy like ptsd from this but if you look at like the synergies for deck of chaos and standard there's not much warlock and abuse with this and again i don't see that really changing things up unless there's some combo i'm really not thinking of but the main thing you thought about before was like malagos the old malagos with spell damage that's not there so I don't know, get the uh, get Dark Moon Rabbit with some insane attack, maybe. Uh, we have Shield Maiden going from six to five mana. I pitched this like, I think multiple times and it's happening. So I'm glad for that. Shield Maiden feels better at five. Is that gonna help Control Warrior enough? Probably not, but it's a nice little touch. A uh, Whirling Combatant goes to a three, six, I guess. Card's okay, can trade a bit better, but again, I don't know what this is accomplishing too much. A uh, Razor Boar for Demon Hunter will be a 3-2, and that deck's actually pretty decent, so this little spike can help trade it up a bit better. Especially pretty nice when you're cheating out other stuff, so uh, Demon Hunter definitely gets a good little kick from this, but that's it. And Demon Hunter's not doing great. And last, the old god I pitched to get buffed is getting buffed, but this just feels wrong. Nizoth is 9 mana now instead of 10. It's an old god. It should be 10 mana. I'm sorry. This is weird. It's weird. I mean, it comes out a turn earlier. That's a big deal. Um, it can't corrupt clowns if you're running clowns with your Nazoth for some reason. But yeah, um, I guess Nazoth is 10 mana. So that's it for the buffs and nerfs. Buffs super underwhelming. Um, I feel like nothing really changes. I feel like nothing changes from the buffs and nerfs overall. I feel like it's just minor little tweaks. Um, I feel like they're relatively happy with the meta, which I find to be super unfun, uninteractive, and don't see that changing but we'll see how it plays out like i said but overall i i can't say i'm a huge fan of these nerfs or buffs to be honest with you anyways uh we'll quickly go through the last few stories that was a lot to go over and don't want to make this episode too long so grandmaster and wild open results uh we had the last week a specialist and according to casters that is an incredibly good thing they could not stand casting it and on na now gidan won uh with spell mage Encanter's Flow, pretty smart, but I guess 
you know, Spring Waters 5. On E, we saw RDU win with Spell Mage with Encantress Flow. He even said, please nerf Encantress Flow after winning. Um, but yeah, uh, he won as well. So congrats to RDU. And on Asia, Blitzchung won two weeks in a row, but not with Spell Mage. He targeted Spell Mage with Token Druid two weeks in a row and went basically undefeated two weeks in a row. So congrats to Blitzchung. As for our $1,000 Wild Open Invitational Tournament, which was really fun, had a blast putting it together, um, was we had two different winners. We had an NA in EU bracket, as we had mentioned. Uh, Evil Devil won on EU. So congrats to Evil Devil. And Sinferno won on NA as well. So congrats to them. And thank you for everyone who participated, watched. It was a blast. And I hope we can do another one of these sooner than later. And now we will get into the mailbag segment where I answer your questions. And again, if you want to ask me a question, leave a comment in the comments below with mailbag in the question. So first we have uh, Ben Hensley asking, do you have any tips on getting to the Masters Tour? I know this is kind of a bit much, but you also see that Golden Skies card back. So he's talking about this new card back and it looks really nice. If you want to get onto the Masters Tour, um, you need to finish top 16 on Legend Ladder on any given month where it's open to qualify for a Masters Tour event. So say this month, finish top 16 Legend, or you can head over to like HS Esports and play open cups. You can grind those. If you win one, you will qualify for a Masters Tour event, or you just play a bunch and get top eight, I believe like four or five times to get in. Basically, you gotta play a lot of Hearthstone. You need to do really well, and it's probably not worth it unless you really love that card back or, you know, really wanna try and get lucky and win some money. And speaking, maybe this will help you out. Mark V asks, how do you get better at Hearthstone? So the main thing is to spend money and buy cards and then you win, right? Pay to win. Um, No, the way, way to get better at Hearthstone is to play a lot, practice, use tools like HS Replay to help you out a little bit with like mulligans, win rate stuff and all of that. And, you know, just, I typically watch high level players, watch a no hands gamer play on Twitch or a fire bat or whatever, a Tice, a top ladder player and just look at what they're doing and try and learn from it. It's the best way to go. Even on like YouTube, just watch like high legend gameplay. Um, It can help a lot. It's just practice, practice, practice. And you know, trying to learn as much as you can. Uh, General AO1 asks, will you make a channel, gameplay channel with Twitch highlights like Solomade? Or is that not something you're considering? I keep back and forth on this. I've done polls on it and there's some interest for it, but overall I've got so much on my plate. I'd rather just push out better content on this channel, more like original content, work on like the doc series, try and get more interviews focus on that and not just shovel out, you know, VOD uploads. Like you can check my Twitch VODs, my Twitch shots at twitch.tv slash Eddie, have my gameplay, check it out there. But overall, at least not yet, I'm not planning on doing gameplay stuff. And lastly, uh, Swiss Gamer asks, uh, just for Nova, do you like mind render? And you know what? Let's ask her herself. If you don't understand cat, uh, she says it's awful. They should delete it and nerf it and delete it again. She is that adamant. And I, I understand Kat 100% perfectly. So there you have it. That's this week in Hearthstone. If you enjoyed the episode, please like and subscribe. Have a great day and stay salty, my friends.